benediction by charles baudelaire translated by cyril scott read for librivox dot org by sarah shahira when the changeless power of a supreme decree the poet issues forth upon the sorry sphere his mother horrified and full of blasphemy uplifts her voice to god who takes compassion on her ah why did i not bear a serpent's nest entire instead of bringing forth this hideous child of doom o oh, cursed be that transient night of vain desire when i conceive my expiation in my womb yet since among all women thou hast chosen me to be the degradation of my jaded mate and since i cannot like a lovely wantonly consign this stunted monster to the glowing grate i'll cause thine overwhelming hatred to rebound upon the cursed tool of thy mock wicked spite forsooth the branches of this wretched tree i'll wound and rob its pestilential blossoms of their might so thus she giveth vent unto her foaming ire and knowing not the changeless statutes of all times herself amid the flames of hell prepares the pyre the consecrated penance of maternal crimes yet neath the invisible shelter of an angel's wing the sunlight loving infant disinherited exhales from all he eats and drinks and everything the ever sweet ambrosia and the nectar red he trifles with the winds and with the clouds that glide about the way unto the cross he loves to sing the spirit of his pilgrimage that faithful guide oft weeps to see him joyful like a bird of spring all those that he would cherish shrink from him with fear and some that waxen bold by his tranquillity and devour hard some grievance from his heart to tear and make him the trial of their ferocity within the bread and wine outspread for his repast to mingle dust and dirty spittle they essay and everything he touches forth they slyly cast or scourge themselves if e'er their feet betrothed his way his wife goes round proclaiming in the crowded quads since he can find my body beauteous to behold why not perform the office of those ancient gods and like unto them redeck myself with shining gold i'll bathe myself with incense spikenard and myrrh with genuflections delicate viands and wine to see in jest if from a heart that loves me dear i cannot flinch away the homage divine and when of these impious jokes at length i tire my frail but mighty hands around his breast entwined with nails like harpies nails shall cunningly conspire the hidden path unto his feeble heart to find and like a youngling bird that trembles in its nest i'll pluck his heart right out within his own blood drown and finally to satiate my favorite beast i'll throw it with intense disdain upon the ground towards the heavens where he sees the sacred grail the poet calmly stretches forth his pious arms whereon the lightnings from his lucid spirit veal the sight of the infuriated mob that swarms o oh, blessed be thou almighty who bestowest pain like some divine redress for our infirmities and like the most refreshing and the purest rain to sanctify the strong for saintly ecstasies i know that for the poet thou wilt grant a chair among the sainted legion and the blissful ones that of the endless feast thou wilt accord his share to him of virtues dominations and of thrones i know that sorrow is that nobleness alone which never may corrupted be by hell nor curse i know in order to enwreath my mystic crown i must inspire the ages and the universe and yet the buried jewels of palmyra old the undiscovered metals and the pearly sea of gems that unto me you show could never hold beside this diadem of blinding brilliancy for it shall be engendered from the purest fire of rays primeval 
from the holy hearth a mass of which the eyes of mortals in their sheen entire are but the tarnished mirrors sad and overcast end of poem this recording is in the public domain echoes by charles baudelaire translated by cyril scott read for librivox.org by andrew k war in nature's temple living columns rise which oftentimes give tongue to words subdued and man traverses this symbolic wood which looks at him with half familiar eyes like lingering echoes which afar confound themselves in deep and sombre unity as vast as night and like transplendency the scents and colours to each other respond and scents there are like infants flesh as chaste as sweet as oboes and as meadows fair and others proud corrupted rich and vast which have the expansion of infinity like amber musk and frankincense and myrrh that sing the souls and senses ecstasy end of poem this recording is in the public domain the sick muse by charles baudelaire translated by cyril scott read for librivox dot org by asaf kos alas my poor muse what aileth thee now thine eyes are bedimmed with the visions of night and silent and cold i perceive on thy brow in their turns despair and madness alight a succubus green or a hobgoblin red has it poured o'er the horror and love from its urn or the nightmare with masterful bearing hath led thee to drown in the depths of some magic minturn i wish as the health-giving fragrance i call that thy breast with strong thoughts could forever be full and that rhythmically flowing thy christian blood could resemble the olden time metrical flood where each in his turn reigned the father of rhymes phobius and pan lord of harvest times end of poem this recording is in the public domain the venal muse by charles baudelaire translated by cyril scott read for librivox dot org by jairus amar o muse of my heart so fond of palaces old wilt have when new year speeds its wintry blast amid those tedious nights with snow o'ercast a log to warm thy feet benumbed with cold Wilt thou thy marbled shoulders then revive, With nightly rays that through thy shudders peep, And void thy purse, and void thy palace, reap, A golden hoard within some azure hive? Thou must, to earn thy daily bread, each night, Suspend the censer like an acolyte, Tedum sing with sanctimonious ease, Or as a famished mountebank with jokes obscene, Essay to lull the vulgar rabble's spleen, Thy laughter soaked in tears which no one sees. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Evil Monk by Charles Baudelaire Translated by Cyril Scott Read for LibriVox.org by Jairus Amar the cloisters old, expounded on their walls, With paintings, the beatic verity, The which, adorning their religious halls, Enrich the frigidness of their austerity. In days when Christian seas bloomed o'er the land, Full many a noble monk unknown to-day, Upon the field of tombs would take his stand, Exalting death in rude and simple way. My soul is a tomb where, 
bad monk that I be, I dwell in search its depths from all eternity, and not be dexed the walls of the oldest spot. O sluggard monk, when shall I glean aright from the living spectacle of my bitter lot, to mould my handiwork and mine eyes delight? End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Enemy by Charles Baudelaire Translated by Cyril Scott Read for LibriVox.org by Jairus Amar My childhood was not but a ravaging storm, Enlivened at times by a brilliant sun. The rain and the winds wrought such havoc and harm, That of buds on my plot there remains hardly one. Behold now the fall of ideas I have reached, and the shovel and rake one must therefore resume. In collecting the turf, inundated and breached, where the waters dug trenches as deep as a tomb. And yet these new blossoms for which I craved, will they find in this earth, like a shore that is laved, the mystical fuel which vigor imparts? O oh, misery! Time devours our lives, and the enemy black, which consumeth our hearts, on the blood of our bodies, increases and thrives. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Ill Luck by Charles Baudelaire Translated by Cyril Scott Read for LibriVox.org by Salma Yasser this heavy burden to uplift o sisyphus the pluck is required and even though the heart is fired art is long and time is swift afar from sepulchres renowned to a graveyard quite apart like a broken drum my heart beats the funeral marsh's sound many a buried jewel sleeps in the long-forgotten deeps, far from mattock and from sound, many a flower wafts aloft its perfumes like a secret soft within the solitudes profound. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Interior Life by Charles Baudelaire Translated by Cyril Scott. Read for LibriVox.org by Amy Graymar in Aroostook County, Maine. A long while I dwelt beneath vast porticoes, while the ocean suns bathed with a thousand fires, and which with their great and majestic spires at eventide looked like basaltic grottoes. The billows enrolling depictured the skies and mingled in solemn and mystical strain the almightiest chords of their luscious refrain with the sunset's colors reflexed in mine eyes it is there that i lived in exalted calm in the midst of the azure the splendor the waves while pregnant with perfumes naked slaves refreshed my forehead with branches of palm whose gentle and only care was to know the secret that caused me to languish so End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Man and the Sea by Charles Baudelaire. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by John E. Farrell free man the sea is to thee ever dear the sea is thy mirror thou regardest thy soul in its mightiest waves that unendingly roll and thy spirit is yet not a chasm less drear thou delightest to plunge deep in thine image down thou takest it with eyes and with arms and embrace and at times 
thine own inward voice wouldst deface with the sound of its savage ungovernable moan you are both of you sombre secretive and deep o mortal thy depths are foray unexplored o sea no one knoweth thy dazzling hoard you both are so jealous your secrets to keep and endless ages have wandered by yet still without pity or mercy you fight so mighty in plunder and death your delight o oh, wrestlers so constant in enmity end of man and the sea recording by john e farrell www.johnefarrell.com Beauty by Charles Baudelaire Translated by Cyril Scott Read for LibriVox.org by Shakira Searle I am lovely, O mortals, like a dream of stone, And my bosom, where each one gets bruised in turn, To inspire the love of a poet is prone, Like matter, eternally silent and stern as an unfathomed sphinx enthroned by the nile my heart a swan's whiteness with granite combines and i hate every movement displacing the lines and never i weep and never i smile the poets in front of mine attitudes fine which the proudest of monuments seem to implant to studies profound all their moments assign for i have all these docile swains to enchant two mirrors which beauty in all things ignite mine eyes my large eyes of eternal light end of poem this recording is in the public domain. The Ideal by Charles Baudelaire Translated by Cyril Scott Read for LibriVox.org by Jairus Amar It could never be those beauties of ivory vignettes, The varied display of a worthless age, Nor puppet-like figures with castanets, that ever an heart like mine could engage. I leave to Gavarni, that poet of chlorosis, his hospital beauties in troops that whirl, for I cannot discover amid his pale roses a flower to resemble my scarlet ideal. Since what for this fathomless heart I require is Lady Macbeth you, in crime so dire, an Aeschylus dream transposed from the south, or thee, O great knight of Michelangelo born, who so calmly thy limbs in strange posture hath drawn, whose allurements are framed for a titan's mouth. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Giantess by Charles Baudelaire Translated by Cyril Scott Read for LibriVox.org by Jordan Heron The Giantess I should have loved, erewhile when heaven conceived each day some child abnormal and obscene, beside a maiden giantess to have lived, like a luxurious cat at the feet of a queen. To see her body flowering with her soul, and grow unchained in awe-inspiring art, within the mists across her eyes that stole to divine the fires entombed within her heart and oft to scramble o'er her mighty limbs and climb the slopes of her enormous knees or in summer when the scorching sunlight streams across the country to recline at ease and slumber in the shadow of her breast like an hamlet neath the mountain crest End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Hymn to Beauty by Charles Baudelaire 
Translated by Cyril Scott. Read for LibriVox.org by Asaph Koss. O oh, beauty, dost thou generate from heaven or from hell? Within thy glance, so diabolic and divine, confusedly both wickedness and goodness dwell, and hence one might compare thee unto sparkling wine. Thy look containeth both the dawn and sunset stars, thy perfumes as upon a sultry night exhale, thy kiss a filter, and thy mouth a Gracian vase that renders heroes cowardly and infants hail ye art thou from the planets or the fiery womb the demon follows in thy train with magic fraught thou scatterest seeds haphazardly of joy and doom thou governst everything but answerest unto naught o loveliness thou spurnest corpses with delight among thy jewels horror hath such charms for thee and murder mid thy mostly cherished trinkets bright upon thy massive bosom dances amorously the blinded fluttering moth towards the candle flies then frizzles falls and falters blessings unto thee the panting swain that o'er his beauteous mistress sighs seems like the sick that stroke their gravestones lovingly what matter if thou comest from the heavens or hell o beauty frightful ghoul ingenious and obscure so long thine eyes thy smile to me the way can tell towards that infinite i love but never saw from god or satan angel mermaid prospering what matter if thou makest blithe voluptuous sprite with rhythms perfumes visions o oh, mine only queen the universe less hideous and the hours less trite end of poem this recording is in the public domain Exotic Perfume by Charles Baudelaire Translated by Cyril Scott Read for LibriVox.org by Shakira Searle When, with closed eyes on a hot afternoon, The scent of thine ardent breast I inhale, Celestial vistas my spirit assail, Caressed, by the flames of an endless sun a languorous island where nature abounds with exotic trees and luscious fruit and with men whose bodies are slim and astute and with women whose frankness delights and astounds by thy perfume enticed to this region remote a port i see laden with mast and with boat still wearied and torn by the distant brine while the tamarisk odours that dreamily throng the air round my slumberous senses entwine and mix in my soul with the mariner's song end of poem this recording is in the public domain Le Chevalier by Charles Baudelaire, translated by Cyril Scott, read for LibriVox.org by Sarah Shahira, Kuala Lumpur. O fleece that foams down onto the shoulders bare, O curls, O scents which lovely languidness exhale, delight to fill this alcove's sombre atmosphere with memories sleeping deep within this tress of hair. I'll weave it in the evening breezes like a view. The shores of Africa and Asia's burning skies, a world forgotten, distant, nearly dead and spent, within thy depths, O aromatic forest lies, 
and light to spirits floating unto melodies mine own beloved glides within thy sacred scent there i will hasten where the trees and humankind with languor lull beside the hot and silent sea strong tresses bear me be to me the waves and wind with thy fragrance lies a dazzling dream confined of sails and masts and flames o lake of ebony a loudly echoing harbour where my soul may hold to quaff the silver cups of colours scents and sound wherein the veils glide upon a sea of gold and stretch their mighty arms the glory to enfold of virgin skies where never-ending heat abounds i'll plunge my brow enamoured with voluptuousness with this darkling ocean of infinitude until my subtle spirit which thy waves caress shall find you once again o fertile weariness unending lullaby of perfume lassitude ye tresses blue recess of strange and sombre shades ye make the azure of the starry realm immense upon the downy beaches by your curls cascades among your mingling fragrances my spirit waves to cull the musk and coconut and lotus scents long foray my hand within thy heavy mane shall scatter rubies pearls sapphires eternally and thus my soul's desire for thee shall never wane for art not thou the oasis where i dream and drain with thoughts profound the golden wine of memory end of poem this recording is in the public domain sonnet twenty eight by charles baudelaire translated by cyril scott read for librivox dot org by shakira searle with pearly robes that wave within the wind even when she walks she seems to dance like swaying serpents round those wands entwined which fakirs wear in rhythmic elegance so like the desert's blue and the sands remote both deaf to mortal suffering and to strife or like the seaweeds neath the waves that float indifferently she moulds her budding life her polished eyes are made of minerals bright and in her mien symbolical and cold wherein an angel mingles with a sphinx of old where all is gold and steel and gems and light there shines just like a useless star eternally the sterile woman's frigid majesty end of poem this recording is in the public domain the flowers of evil by charles baudelaire translated by cyril scott read for librivox dot org by sarah shahira posthumous remorse ah when thou shalt slumber, my darkling love, Beneath a black marble-made statuette, And when thou have not for thy house or alcove, But a cavernous den and a damp oubliette, When the tombstone oppressing thy timorous breast, And thy hips drooping sweetly with listless decay, The pulse and desires of mine heart shall arrest, And thy feet from pursuing their adventurous way, then the grave that dark friend of my limitless dreams for the grave ever readeth the poet aright amid those long nights which no slumber redeems twill quiring what use to thee incomplete sprite that thou never hast unfathomed the tears of the dead then the worms will gnaw deep at thy body like dread end of poem this recording is in the public domain. The Balcony by Charles Baudelaire, translated by Cyril Scott, read for LibriVox.org by Salma Yasser. Oh, mother of memories, 
mistress of mistresses oh the all my pleasures oh the all my prayers canst thou remember those luscious caresses the charm of the hearth and the sweet evening airs oh mother of memories mistress of mistresses those evenings illumined by the glow of the coal and those roseate nights with their vaporous wings how calm was the breast and how good was the soul twas then we uttered imperishable things those evenings illumined by the glow of the coal how lovely the suns on those hot autumn nights how vast were the heavens and the heart how hale as i leaned towards you oh my queen of delight the scent of the blood i seemed to inhale how lovely the sun on those hot autumn nights the shadows of night time grew dense like a pool and deep through the darkness thine eyes i divined and i drank of the breath o oh, sweetness a gall and the feet in my brotherly hands reclined the shadows of night time grew dense like a pall i know how to call forth this moment so dear and to live my past laid on the knees once more for where shall i seek for the beauties but here in the languorous heart and the body so pure i know how to call forth this moment so dear those perfumes those infinite kisses and sighs are they born in some gulf to our plummets the night like rejuvenate suns that mount up to the skies that first have been cleansed in the depths of the tide o oh, perfumes o oh, infinite kisses and sighs end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Possessed One by Charles Baudelaire, translated by Cyril Scott, read for LibriVox.org by K. Hand. The sun is enveloped in crape. Like it, O moon of my life, wrap thyself up in shade. At will, smoke or slumber, be silent, be stayed, and dive deep down in dispassion's dark pit. I cherish thee thus. But if tis thy mood, like a star from out its penumbra appears, To float in the regions where madness careers, Fair dagger, burst forth from thy sheath, tis good. Yea, light up thine eyes at the fire of renown, Or kindle desire by the looks of some clown. Thine all is my joy, whether dull or aflame. Just be what thou wilt, black night, dawn divine, There is not a nerve in my trembling frame, but cries, I adore thee, Beelzebub mine. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Semper Idem by Charles Baudelaire. Translated by Cyril Scott. Read for LibriVox.org by Asaf Kos. From whence it comes, you ask, this gloom acute, Like waves that o'er the rocky headland fall? When once our hearts have gathered in their fruit, To live is a curse, a secret known to all. A grief quite simple, not mysterious, And like your joy for all both loud and shrill. Nay, cease to clamour, be not e'er so curious, and yet although your voice is sweet be still be still o soul with rapture ever rife o mouth with the childish smile far more than life the subtle bonds of death round us twine let let my heart the wine of falsehood drink and dreamlike deep within your fair eyes sink and in the shade of thy lashes long recline End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. All Entire by Charles Baudelaire. Translated by Cyril Scott. Read for LibriVox.org by Salma Yasser. 
the demon in my lofty vault this morning came to visit me and striving me to find it fault he said fain would i know of thee among the many beauteous things all which her subtle grace proclaim among the dark and drowsy things which go to make her charming frame which is the sweetest unto thee my soul to him thou didst retort since all with her is destiny of preference there can be note when all transports me with delight if aught deludes i cannot know she either rules one like the night or dazzles like the morning glow that harmony is too divine which governs all her body fair for powerless mortals to define in notes the many concords there o mystic metamorphosis of all my senses plant in one her voice a beauteous perfume is her breath makes music chaste and wan end of poem this recording is in the public domain Sonnet 43 by Charles Baudelaire Translated by Cyril Scott Read for LibriVox.org by Shakira Searle What sayest thou tonight, poor soul so drear? What sayest, heart erewhile engulfed in gloom, To the very lovely, very chaste, and very dear, whose godlike look hath made thee to rebloom to her with pride we chant an echoing hymn for naught can touch the sweetness of her sway her flesh ethereal as the seraphim her eyes with robe of light our souls array and be it in the night or solitude among the streets or mid the multitude her shadow torch-like dances in the air and murmurs i the beautiful proclaim that for my sake alone ye love the fair i am the guardian angel muse and dame end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Living Torch by Charles Baudelaire Translated by Cyril Scott Read for LibriVox.org They stand before me now, those eyes that shine, No doubt inspired by an angel wise. They stand, those godlike brothers that are mine, And pour their diamond fires in mine eyes from all transgressions from all snares they save towards the path of joy they guide my ways they are my servants and i am their slave and all my soul this living torch obeys ye charming eyes ye have those mystic beams of candles burning in full day the sun awakes yet kills not their fantastic gleams ye sing the awakening they the dark oblivion the awakening of my spirit ye proclaim o stars no sun can ever kill your flame end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Spiritual Dawn by Charles Baudelaire Translated by Cyril Scott Read for LibriVox.org by Asaf Kos When the morning white and rosy breaks With the gnawing ideal upon the debauchee By the power of a strange decree Within the sotted beast an angel wakes 
the mantle of heaven's inaccessible blue for wearied mortals that still dream and mourn expands and sinks towards the chasm drawn thus cherished goddess being pure and true upon the rests of foolish orgy nights thine image more sublime more pink more clear before my staring eyes is ever there the sun has darkened all the candle lights and thus thy spectre like the immortal sun is ever victorious thou resplendent one end of poem this recording is in the public domain Evening Harmony by Charles Baudelaire Translated by Cyril Scott Read for LibriVox.org by Shakira Searle The hour approacheth when, as their stems incline, The flowers evaporate like an incense urn, And sounds and scents in the vesper breezes turn a melancholy waltz and a drowsiness divine the flowers evaporate like an incense urn the viol vibrates like the wailing of souls that repine a melancholy waltz and a drowsiness divine the skies like a mosque are beautiful and stern the viol vibrates like the wailing of souls that repine sweet souls that shrink from chaos vast and etern the skies like a mosque are beautiful and stern the sunset drowns within its blood-red brine sweet souls that shrink from chaos vast and etern essay the wreaths of their faded past to entwine the sunset drowns within its blood-red brine thy thought within me glows like an incense urn end of poem this recording is in the public domain overcast sky by charles baudelaire translated by cyril scott read for librivox dot org by shakira searle me seemeth thy glance soft enshrouded with dew thy mysterious eyes are they grey green or blue alternately cruel and tender and shy reflect both the languor and calm of the sky thou recallest those white days with shadows caressed engendering tears from the enraptured breast when racked by an anguish unfathomed that weeps the nerves to awake gibe the spirit that sleeps at times thou art like those horizons divine where the suns of the nebulous seasons decline how resplendent art thou o pasturage vast illumined by the beams of a sky overcast o dangerous dame o seductive clime as well will i love both thy snow and thy rhyme and shall i know how from the frosts to entice delights that are keener than iron and ice end of poem this recording is in the public domain invitation to a journey by charles baudelaire translated by cyril scott read for librivox dot org by shakira searle my sister my dear consider how fair 
together to live it would be down yonder to fly to love till we die in the land which resembles thee those suns that rise neath erratic skies no charm could be like unto theirs so strange and divine like those eyes of thine which glow in the midst of their tears there all is order and loveliness luxury calm and voluptuousness the tables and chairs polished bright by the years would decorate sweetly our rooms and the rarest of flowers would twine round our bars and mingle their amber perfumes the ceilings arrayed and the mirrors inlaid this eastern splendour among would furtively steal o'er our souls and appeal with its tranquillous native tongue there all is order and loveliness luxury calm and voluptuousness in the harbours peep at the vessels asleep their humour is always to roam yet it is but to grant thy smallest want from the ends of the earth that they come the sunsets beam upon meadow and stream and upon the city entire neath a violet crest the world sinks to rest illumed by a golden fire there all is order and loveliness luxury calm and voluptuousness end of poem this recording is in the public domain Causery by Charles Baudelaire, translated by Cyril Scott, read for LibriVox.org by K. Hand. You are a roseate autumn sky that glows, yet sadness rises in me like the flood and leaves in ebbing on my lips morose the poignant memory of its bitter mind. In vain your hands my swooning breast embrace, O oh friend, alone remains the plundered spot where woman's biting grip has left its trace my heart the beasts devoured seek it not my heart is a palace pillaged by the herd they kill and take each other by the throat a perfume glides round your bosom bared o loveliness thou scourge of souls devote thine eyes of fire luminous like feasts to burn these rags rejected by the beasts end of poem this recording is in the public domain Autumn Song by Charles Baudelaire. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by John E. Farrell. Shortly we will plunge within the frigid gloom. Farewell, swift summer brightness, all too short. I hear already sounding with a death-like boom the wood that falls upon the pavement of the court. The whole of winter enters in my being. Pain, hate, honor, labor hard and forced and dread, and like the northern sun upon its polar plain, my heart will soon be but a stone, iced and red. I listen trembling unto every log that falls the scaffold which they build has not a duller sound my spirits waver like the trembling tower walls that shake with every echoing blow the builders pound meseemeth as to these monotonous blows i sway they nail for one a coffin lid or sound a knell for whom autumn now and summer yesterday this strange mysterious noise betokens a farewell i love within your oblong eyes the verdant rays my sweet 
but bitter everything to-day me seems and not your love the boudoir nor the flickering blaze can replace the sun that o'er the screen streams and yet the mother and caress me tender heart even me the thankless and worthless one beloved or oh sister unto me the sweets impart of a glorious autumn or a sinking sun ephemeral task the beckoning the beckoning empty tomb is set o oh, grant me as upon your knees my head i lay because the white and torrid summer i regret to taste the parted seasons mild and amber ray end of autumn song recording by john e farrell www.johnefarrell.com Sisina by Charles Baudelaire, translated by Cyril Scott, read for LibriVox.org by K. Hand. Imagine Diana in gorgeous array, how into the forests and thickets she flies, with her hair in the breezes and flushed for the fray, how the very best riders she proudly defies. Have you seen Therogeny of the bloodthirsty heart, as an unshod herd to attack he bestirs? with cheeks all inflamed playing up to his part as he goes sword in hand up the royal stairs and so is sisina yet this warrior sweet has a soul with compassion and kindness replete inspired by drums and by powder her sway knows how to concede to the supplicant's prayers and her bosom laid waste by the flames has alway for those that are worthy a fountain of tears end of poem this recording is in the public domain. To a Creolian Lady by Charles Baudelaire Translated by Cyril Scott Read for LibriVox.org by K. Hand In a country perfumed with the sun's embrace, I knew neath a dais of purple palms and branches where idleness weeps o'er one's face, a Creolian lady of unknown charms her tint pale and warm this bewitching bride displays a nobly nurtured mien courageous and grand like a huntsman her stride a tranquil smile and eyes serene if madam you'd go to the true land of gain by the banks of the verdant loire or the seine how worthy to garnish some pile of renown you'd awake in the calm of some shadowy nest a thousand songs in the poet's breast that your eyes would inspire far more than your brown end of poem this recording is in the public domain moesta et erabunda by charles baudelaire translated by cyril scott read for librivox dot org by marion o oh, agatha tell does thy heart not at times fly away far from the city impure and the lowering sea to another ocean that blinds with its dazzling ray so blue and so clear and profound like virginity o oh, agatha tell does thy heart not at times fly away the sea the vast ocean our travail and trouble consoles what demon hath gifted the sea with a voice from on high to sing us a tune to an aeolus organ that rolls forth a grumbling burden a lenitive lullaby the sea the vast ocean our travail and trouble consoles o oh, carry me wagons o oh, sailing ships help me depart far far here the dust is quite wet with our showering tears o oh, say it is true that agatha's desolate heart proclaimeth away from remorse and from crime and from cares o oh, carry me wagons o oh, sailing ships help me depart how distant you seem to be perfumed elysian fields wherein there is nothing but sunshine and love and glee where all that one loves is so worthy and lovingly yields and our hearts float about in the purest of ecstasy how distant you seem to be perfumed elysian fields but the green paradise of those transient 
infantile loves the strolls and the songs and the kisses and bunches of flowers the vials vibrating beyond in the mountainous groves with the chalice of wine in the evening entwined in the bowers but the green paradise of those transient infantile loves that innocent heaven o'erflowing with furtive delight than china or india is it still further away or could one with pitiful prayers bring it back to our sight or yet with a silvery voice o'er the ages convey that innocent heaven o'erflowing with furtive delight end of poem this recording is in the public domain the ghost by charles baudelaire translated by cyril scott read for librivox dot org by shakira searle just like an angel with evil eye i shall return to thee silently upon thy bower i'll alight with falling shadows of the night with thee my brownie i'll commune and give thee kisses cold as the moon and with a serpent's moist embrace i'll crawl around thy resting place and when the livid morning falls thou'lt find alone the empty walls and till the evening cold twill be as others with their tenderness upon thy life and youthfulness i'll reign alone with dread o'er thee End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Autumn Song by Charles Baudelaire. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by John E. Farrell. They ask me thy crystalline eyes so acute odd lover why am i to thee so dear be sweet and keep silent my heart which is seer for all save the rude and untutored brute is loath its infernal depths to reveal and its dissolute motto engraven with fire oh charmer whose arms endless slumber inspire i abominate passion and wit makes me ill so let us love gently within his retreat foreboding love seeks for his arrows a prey i know all the arms of his battle array delirium and loathing oh pale marguerite like me art thou not an autumnal ray alas my so white my so cold marguerite end of autumn song by charles baudelaire recording by john e farrell www.johneferrell.com Sadness of the Moon Goddess by Charles de Baudelaire Translated by Cyril Scott Read for LibriVox.org by Amy Graymore Tonight the moon dreams with increased weariness Like a beauty stretched forth on a downy heap Of rugs while her languorous fingers caress the contour of her breasts before falling to sleep on the satin back of the avalanche soft she falls into lingering swoons as she dies while she lifteth her eyes to white visions aloft which like efflorescence float up to the skies when at times in her languor down on to the sphere she slyly lets trickle a furtive tear a poet desiring slumber to shun takes up this pale tear in the palm of his hand, the colors of which like an opal blend, and buries it far from the eyes of the sun. 
End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Cats by Charles Baudelaire Translated by Cyril Scott Read for LibriVox.org by Shakira Searle All ardent lovers and all sages prize as ripening years incline upon their brows the mild and mighty cats pride of the house that like unto them are indolent stern and wise the friends of learning and of ecstasy they search for silence and the horrors of gloom the devil had used them for his steeds of doom could he alone have bent their pride to slavery when musing they display those outlines chaste of the great sphinxes stretched o'er the sandy waste that seem to slumber deep in a dream without end from out their loins a fountainous furnace flies and grains of sparkling gold as fine as sand bestar the mystic pupils of their eyes end of poem this recording is in the public domain owls by charles baudelaire translated by cyril scott read for librivox dot org by asaf kos beneath the shades of sombre yews the silent owls sit ranged in rows like ancient idols strangely pose and darting fiery eyes they muse immovable they sit and gaze until the melancholy hour at which the darknesses devour the faded sunset's slanting rays their attitude instructs the wise that he within this world who flies from tumult and from merriment the man allured by a passing face forever bears that chastisement of having wished to change his place End of poem this recording is in the public domain. Music by Charles Baudelaire Translated by Cyril Scott Read for LibriVox.org by Shakira Searle Oft music possesses me like the seas To my planet pale Neath a ceiling of mist in the lofty breeze, I set my sail. With inflated lungs and expanded chest, Like to a sail, on the backs of the heaped-up billows I rest, Which the shadows veil. I feel all the anguish within me arise Of a ship in distress, The tempest, the rain, neath the lowering skies, my body caress at times the calm pool or the mirror clear of my despair end of poem this recording is in the public domain the joyous defunct by charles baudelaire translated by cyril scott Read for LibriVox.org. Where snails abound in a juicy soil, I will dig for myself a fathomless grave, where at leisure mine ancient bones can coil and sleep quite forgotten like a shark neath the wave. I hate every tomb, I abominate wills and rather than tears from the world to implore i would ask of the crows with their vampire bills to devour every bit of my carcass impure o oh, worms without eyes without ears black friends to you a defunct one rejoicing descends enlivened philosophers offspring of dung 
without any qualm o'er my wreckage spread and tell if some torment there still can be wrung for this soulless old frame that is dead midst the dead end of poem this recording is in the public domain the broken bell by charles de baudelaire translated by cyril scott read for LibriVox.org by amy graymore how sweet and bitter on a winter night beside the palpitating fire to list as slowly distant memories alight to sounds of chimes that sing across the mist oh happy is that bell with hearty throat which neither age nor time can e'er defeat which faithfully uplifts its pious note like an aged soldier on his beat for me my soul is cracked and mid her cares would often fill with her songs the midnight airs and oft it chances that her feeble moan is like the wounded warrior's fainting groan who by a lake of blood neath bodies slain in anguish falls and never moves again end of poem this recording is in the public domain Spleen by Charles Baudelaire Translated by Cyril Scott Read for LibriVox.org by Andrew K. War. The rainy moon of all the world is weary, And from its urn a gloomy cold pours down Upon the pallid inmates of the mortuary And on the neighbouring outskirts of the town. My wasted cat, in searching for a litter, Bestirs its mangy paws from post to post, a poet's soul that wanders in the gutter with the jaded voice of a shivering ghost the smoking pine log while the drone laments accompanies the wheezy pendulum the while amidst a haze of dirty scents those fatal remnants of a sick man's room the gallant knave of hearts and queen of spades relate their ancient amorous escapades end of poem this recording is in the public domain. Obsession by Charles Baudelaire Translated by Cyril Scott Read for LibriVox.org By Asaf Kos Great forests, you alarm me like a mighty fane, Like organ tones you roar, and in our hearts of stone where ancient sobs vibrate, O oh, halls of endless pain, the answering echoes of your de profundi moan. I hate the ocean, hate thy tumults and thy throbs. My spirit finds them in himself, this bitter glee of vanquished mortals, full of insults and of sobs. I hear it in the mightiest laughter of the sea. O oh, starless night, thy loveliness my soul inhales, Without those starry rays which speak a language known, For I desire the dark, the naked, and the lone. But e'en those darknesses themselves to me are veils, Where I live, and by the millions neath my eyelids prance, Long, long departed beings with familiar glance. End of poem this recording is in the public domain. Magnetic Horror by Charles Baudelaire Translated by Cyril Scott Read for LibriVox.org by K. Hand Beneath this sky so livid and strange, Tormented like thy destiny, What thoughts within thy spirit range themselves? O libertine, reply! With vain desires forever torn Towards the uncertain and the vast, And yet like Ovid I'll not mourn, Who from his Roman heaven was cast. O heavens turbulent as the streams, In you I mirror forth my pride, Your clouds which clad in morning glide, Are the hearses of my dreams, And in your illusion lies the hell Wherein my heart delights to dwell. End of poem this recording is in the public domain.
The Lid by Charles Baudelaire, translated by Cyril Scott. Read for LibriVox.org by Phil Winkleman. Where'er he may rove, upon sea or on land, neath a fiery sky or a pallid sun, be he Christian or one of Cythera's band, opulent Croesus or beggar, tis one. Whether citizen, peasant, or vagabond he, be his little brain active or dull, everywhere man feels the terror of mystery and looks upon high with a glance full of fear. The heaven above, that oppressive wall, a ceiling lit up in some lewd music hall where the actors step forth on a blood-red soil, the Eremite's hope and the dread of the sot, the sky, that black lid of a mighty pot where vast and minute human races boil end of poem this recording is in the public domain bertha's eyes by charles baudelaire translated by cyril scott read for LibriVox.org by k hand the loveliest eyes you can scorn with your wondrous glow. O oh, beautiful childish eyes, there abounds in your light a something unspeakably tender and good as the night. O oh, eyes, over me your enchanting darkness let flow. Large eyes of my child, O oh, arcana, profoundly adored, ye resemble so closely those caves in the magical creek, where within the deep slumbering shade of some petrified peak there shines undiscovered the gems of a dazzling horde. My child has got eyes so profound and so dark and so vast, like thee, O unending night, and thy mystical shine. Their flames are those thoughts that with love and with faith combine, and sparkle deep down in the depths so alluring or chaste. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Set of the Romantic Sun by Charles Baudelaire Translated by Cyril Scott Read for LibriVox.org by K. Hand How beauteous the sun as it rises supreme, like an explosion that greets us from above! Oh, happy is he that can hail with love its decline, more glorious far than a dream! I saw flower, furrow, and brook, I recall how they swooned like a tremulous heart neath the sun. Let us haste to the skyline, tis late, let us run, at least to catch one slanting ray ere it fall. But the god who eludes me I chase all in vain, the night irresistible plants its domain, black mists and vague shivers of death it forebodes. While an odor of graves through the darkness spreads, and on the swamp's margin my timid foot treads upon slimy snails and on unseen toads. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Meditation by Charles Baudelaire This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by John E. Farrell be wise o oh my woe seek thy grievance to drown thou didst call for the night and behold it is here an atmosphere sombre envelops the town to some bringing peace and to others a care whilst the manifold souls of the vile multitude neath the lash of enjoyment that merciless sway go plucking remorse from the menial brood from them far o oh my grief hold my hand come this way behold how they beckon those years long expired from heaven in faded apparel attired how regret smiling 
foams on the waters like yeast. Its arches of slumber the dying sun spreads, and like a long winding sheet dragged to the east, oh, hearken, beloved, how the night softly treads. End of Meditation Recording by John E. Farrell www.johnefarrell.com To a Passerby by Charles Baudelaire Translated by Cyril Scott Read for LibriVox.org Around me thundered the deafening noise of the street In mourning apparel portraying majestic distress with queenly fingers just lifting the hem of her dress a stately woman passed by with hurrying feet agile and noble with limbs of perfect poise ah how i drank thrilled through like a being insane in her looks a dark sky from whence spring forth the hurricane there lay but the sweetness that charms and the joy that destroys a flash then the night O oh, loveliness fugitive, whose glance has so suddenly caused me again to live, shall I not see you again till this life is o'er? Elsewhere, far away, too late, perhaps never more, for I know not whither you fly, nor you where I go. O oh, soul that I would have loved, and that you know. End of poem this recording is in the public domain. Illusionary Love by Charles Baudelaire Translated by Cyril Scott Read for LibriVox.org by Leah When I behold thee wander by, my languorous love, To songs of viols which throughout the dome resound, Harmonious and stately as thy footsteps move, Bestowing forth the languor of thy glance profound. When I regard thee, glowing in the gaslight rays, Thy pallid brow embellished by a charm obscure, Here, where the evening torches light the twilight haze, Thine eyes attracting me like those of a portraiture, I say, how beautiful she is, how strangely rich! A mighty memory, royal and commanding tower a garland and her heart bruised like a ruddy peach is ripe like her body for love's sapient power art thou that spicy autumn fruit with taste supreme art thou a funeral vase inviting tears of grief aroma causing one of eastern wastes to dream a downy cushion bunch of flowers or golden sheaf I know that there are eyes, most melancholy ones, where no precious secret deeply hidden lies, resplendent shrines, devoid of relics, sacred stones, more empty, more profound than ye yourselves, O skies? Yea, does thy semblance not alone for me suffice to kindle senses which the cruel truth abhor? All one to me, thy folly or thy heart of ice, decoy or mask, all hail, thy beauty I adore. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Mists and Rains by Charles Baudelaire This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by John E. Farrell O last of autumn and winter, steeped in haze, O sleepy seasons, you I love and praise, Because around my heart and brain You twine a misty winding sheet and a nebula shrine. On that great plain, where frigid blasts abound, Where, through the nights, so long the vein whirls round, 
my soul more free than in the springtime soft will stretch her raven wings and soar aloft unto an heart with gloomy things replete on which remain the frosts of former times o oh, pallid seasons mistress of our climes as your pale shadows nothing is so sweet unless it be on a moonless night a twain on some chance couch to soothe to sleep our pain end of mists and rains recording by john e farrell www.johnefarrell.com the wine of lovers by charles baudelaire translated by cyril scott read for LibriVox.org by shakira searle today the distance is superb without bridle spur or curb let us mount on the back of wine for regions fairy and divine let's like two angels tortured by some dark delirious fantasy pursue the distant mirage drawn o'er the blue crystal of the dawn and gently balanced on the wing of some obliging whirlwind we in equal rapture revelling my sister side by side will flee without repose nor truce where gleams the golden paradise of my dreams end of poem this recording is in the public domain Condemned Women by Charles Baudelaire Translated by Cyril Scott Read for LibriVox.org by Ken Masters Like thoughtful cattle on the yellow sands reclined, They turn their eyes towards the horizon of the sea, Their feet towards each other stretched, Their hands entwined, they tell of gentle yearning, frigid misery. A few, with heart-confiding faith of old, Imbued amid the darkling grove, Where silver streamlets flow, Unfold to each their loves of tender infanthood, And carve the verdant stems of the vine-kissed portico. And others, like unto nuns with footsteps slow and grave ascend the hallowed rocks of ancient mystic lore where long ago st anthony like a surging wave the naked purple breasts of his temptation saw and still some more that neath the shimmering masses stroll among the silent chasm of some pagan caves to soothe their burning fevers unto thee they call o bacchus who all ancient wounds and sorrow laves and others again whose necks in scapulars delight who hide a whip beneath their garments secretly comingling in the sombre wood and lonesome night the foam of torments and of tears with ecstasy. O oh, virgins, demons, monsters, and O oh, martyred brood, great souls that mock reality with remorseless sneers, O oh, saints and satyrs, searchers for infinitude, at times so full of shouts, at times so full of tears you to whom within your hell my spirit flies poor sisters yea i love you as i pity you for your unsatiated thirsts and anguished sighs and for the vials of love 
within your hearts so true. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Death of the Lovers by Charles Baudelaire Translated by Cyril Scott Read for LibriVox.org by Ken Masters We will have beds which exhale odours soft. We will have divans profound as the tomb, And delicate plants on the ledges aloft, Which under the bluest of skies for us bloom. Exhausting our hearts to their last desires, They both shall be like unto two glowing coals, Reflecting the twofold light of their fires Across the twin mirrors of our two souls. One evening of mystical azure skies We'll exchange but one single lightning flash just like a long sob, replete with goodbyes. And later an angel shall joyously pass through the half-open doors to replenish and wash the torches expired and the tarnished glass. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Death of the Poor by Charles Baudelaire Translated by Cyril Scott Read for LibriVox.org by Ken Masters It is death that consoles, yea, and causes our lives. Tis the goal of this life, and of hope the sole ray, Which like a strong potion enlivens and gives us the strength to plod on to the end of the day. And all through the tempest, the frost and the snows, tis the shimmering light on our black skyline, tis the famous inn which the guide-book shows, whereat one can eat and sleep and recline. Tis an angel that holds in his magic hands The sleep which ecstatic dream commands, Who remakes up the beds of the naked and poor. Tis the fame of the gods, tis the granary blessed, Tis the purse of the poor, and his birthplace of rest. To the unknown heavens, tis the wide open door. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. End of the Flowers of Evil by Charles Baudelaire Translated by Cyril Scott